Hey everyone, Chang here and welcome to my channel. Now today we're still going to talk about proof, another proof technique. Now, before I've talked about the proof of contradiction, and I'm not going to spend more time talking about this, the primary focus of this video is actually for the proof by contrapositive or the contrapositive method, right? The reason I put contradiction is because at least when I first initially learned it, right? And I feel like a number of students who've encountered it actually get these two basically mixed up, a little confused, right? They work through very similar, I guess you could say method, but actually the reasoning and the initial assumption are all actually drastically different. Remember, contradiction. I've done an entire video on it. I'm gonna put a link in the description down below if you wanna check it out, right? And I'm gonna put a tag somewhere in the video. I'm not sure how it usually shows up. But basically, yeah, it's gonna pop up somewhere. Contradiction. The idea of contradiction is that you assume the opposite. So normally, when you're doing proof problem, you have basically an if P. P is the condition statement, right? Some condition must be met. Then you wanna show that Q, which is the result statement, right, is the consequence of this initial condition being true, right? If P is holds water, basically, then you can show that Q is the end result. That's usually the type of proof that you would normally see. Well, contradiction works like this. You assume the opposite of the condition. So you assume opposite condition. And through a lot of logical mumble jumble, right? Eventually, you run into basically what is named, right? The contradiction. You run into something that makes absolutely no sense. But since it's all logically sound, you're going through it step by step, there's nothing flawed in your logical argument. The only reason you would run into some mumble jumble that actually makes no sense, that contradiction, is that your initial assumption must be false. It must not hold water. So that's the idea of contradiction. Assume the opposite condition, then run into contradiction. Then contradiction, therefore the original assumption must be false. Okay, well, here's what it basically looked like in sort of proof symbol. You assume not P, then you have a contradiction. And I failed to mention this in the math symbol, math proof symbol, because I wasn't quite sure and then I had to look it up. I've seen this symbol and this one looks vaguely familiar. I remember using this before. Now, another one that apparently is very common that I haven't seen much use, but apparently uh, a lot of people have is this one as well. So these two are one of among, I think, several symbols that mean contradiction. So just to let you guys know and see it in sort of this sort of truth statement, right? Now, contrapositive is slightly different, right? It still assume opposite, but here's the thing. It assumes the opposite result the result condition or result statement, right? Opposite result. And from that opposite result, right? You work your way, work to show opposite condition. Condition, okay? The idea is that, remember, we want to normally in a, in a standard proof, right? We, if this condition holds, then this is the result we want. But this sort of method, this contrapositive, is the idea that I'm gonna assume that the other result, the one that I don't want, is what's happening. And from there, I'm gonna work my way through and realize that that actually leads to the fact that the opposite condition is what occurs. Well, if that's the case, since opposite results result, uh, <laughs> I'm tongue tying myself, right? Opposite results end up showing that you need the opposite condition or you have the opposite condition, then the indirect assumption is that if you have the regular condition, then the regular result will show. That's the whole premise of contrapositive, right? So if P then Q, what you're gonna do is you're gonna assume not Q and then you show basically not P. Right, so that's contrapositive. So, contradiction, well, hence, you know, assume opposite condition, run to contradiction. Contrapositive, assume opposite result, and then you work to show 
opposite condition. So actually contrapositive is just switching the conditions and results around, making it not, but then basically going through sort of an indirect proof as, or actually direct proof as well. These two are one of several, what we call indirect proof method. We don't go directly into just step one, step two, step three. We use this sort of logical reasoning to basically indirectly prove the result we want. Let's look at this problem right here. Let x be an element of the integers. If 5x minus 3 is even, then x is odd. Now, you can actually go and directly prove that if this guy's even, then this guy's odd, right? There's no qualms about that. The idea with all these different proof style, proof techniques, right, approaches, is that certain proof techniques save you a lot more time than just always just bulldozing with direct proof. Well, let's look at this. This one may be not as much time, but it's actually pretty cool. So if this is our P statement, 5x minus 3 is even, right? This is our condition. Then we say the result is that x is odd. Well, if we're going to try to prove this by contrapositive, what we're going to do is we're going to assume the opposite of this and then prove the opposite of this. So basically, if we can show, right, that if x is even, and that implies, right, f x minus 3 is odd. That is the same thing as proving this original statement. That's the whole premise of proof by contrapositive. Well, this one actually makes it a little easier because, I mean, you can definitely work with this, but why make your life more difficult when x is even? It's a very simple definition, and we just plug it in and see what happens, right? So if we assume x is even, that means we can write x as 2a, 2 times some whole number. Right, where a is also an element of the integers, right, just to be more precise. Okay, cool. Well, we plug it in, 5 times 2a, right, minus 3. Well, that is 10a minus 3, where a is some number in the integers. Well, in this case, we can't really factor out 2, right? because we have a minus three and so on and so forth, it's not gonna be a whole number. Well, so that means this statement right here is odd. Okay, cool. Well, just like that. Assume is even. Show that this statement, after we plugged in this even uh, assumption, right, that the end result is odd. Since this hold water, this original statement, if five X minus three is even, then X is odd is true as well. And just like that, proof by contrapositive. Let's look at another problem. All right, so let's look at the second problem. If A and B are a member of the real number group, right? And A times B is not rational. It's not a member of the rational group. Basically, you can't write the product of A, B as a fraction. Then either A or B is not rational. Now, you can definitely prove this directly. And it utilizes basically another form of proof or another method approach. And it's called case by case. I'm going to leave that in a different video where we're going to actually focus on case by case. But why go through the trouble when you can actually prove this entire statement by proof by contrapositive, right? So this is our initial condition. If a and b is an element of the real number and a and a times b is not an element of the rational number, that's our initial condition statement, then either a or b is not rational. Well, proof by contrapositive, we look at the final result statement and we do the opposite. So if the original one is assume a or b is not rational, then the opposite must assume a and b, right, is rational. So assume A and B are an element of Q, basically of the rational number, right? And we want to show, want to show that the opposite of this, right? That this A, and A times B, right, is actually rational. If we can do that, then the original proof is true. Well, A and B are rational, so A can actually be written as X y, and let's just say b as m over n, where x, y, m, and n are elements of integer. And of course, 
uh, if you want to be as precise as possible where uh, y and n cannot equal zero because we don't want it to become, you know, some jumbo nonsense. All right, cool. So we have that. Now, if we multiply a times b, that just gives us x m over y n. Well, we know that x, y, m, n are members of the integers, right? So we have x times m, which is still going to be an integer. y times n is still going to be an integer. This whole thing is by definition rational. Therefore, the product a, b is rational. That's what we want to show. Well, if that's the case, then it's proof. It is concluded, right? This statement is true. Therefore, the original statement, proof by contrapositive, right, is true as well. All right, let's look at this third problem right here. Is it going to save us a lot of time? No, actually, I think we're sort of doing the same thing when we do proof by contrapositive because, I mean, the work in this case is probably about the same. Now, since we're trying to learn the method, practice it, we're going to do it anyway. Let y be an element of the integers. If 5y minus 7 is odd, then 9y plus 2 is even. Well, if that's the case, what we're going to do, hopefully at this point, we know which one is the condition and which one is the result. We're going to assume the opposite result and show that the opposite condition comes from that. Well, in this case, the opposite result. Assume 9y plus 2 is odd. Okay. Now, before anything, I'm going to rewrite it and hopefully you guys can sort of see what's happening. 9y plus 2 and I'm going to write it as close to this as possible because I mean that's really what we're worried about at this point. 9y plus 2 is the same as, let's just do parentheses so it's a lot more obvious, 5y minus 7, right, plus, and let's just do another parentheses, 4y, and what is that, plus 9, right, yeah, okay, cool. Notice that basically I just separated these guys, 5y plus 4y is going to be 9y, Negative 7 plus 9 is going to be 2. Okay, now since we're assuming this guy's odd, we know this entire statement is equal by definition of odd numbers. Uh, let's just say about, what is it, 2x plus 1, where x is some integer. Okay, cool. Well, if that's the case, let's just start messing with things and see what happens because we're worried really about this statement right here. Well, if I start moving this over, I subtract. 4y uh, plus 9, the whole thing. So basically, it's going to be subtract 4y, subtract 9. What I have is 5y minus 7 equals 2x plus 1 minus 4y minus 9. Well, that simplifies to 2x, and then it's going to be minus 4y, and then this one is going to be minus 8. Well, guess what? From here, looking at these numbers right here, they're all even, so you can actually factor out a 2 right, you have x minus 2y minus 4. Therefore, this entire statement, this guy right here, 5y minus 7, is even. And that's what we want. We assume the opposite. First and foremost, remember, we're assuming the opposite of this, where 9y plus 2 is odd, and we want to show the opposite of this, that since this is the original one, the opposite is that 5y minus 7 is even. We did that, therefore, this original statement is true. All right, so there you have it. This is proof by contrapositive. Don't get it mixed up with proof by contradiction. Once again, they are very different. The other thing is that proof by contrapositive, although it seems kind of weird at first, is that you're switching things not only whether it's the original assumption is true to the original assumption is false, but you're also reversing the order as well, right? Where you have if condition then result, now you're trying to prove that if not result then not condition. That's the whole point of proof by contrapositive. Hopefully at this point, some of these are a little more clear now. These are all just different proof techniques, right? There's no one way to prove. As long as you can get your mathematical reasoning, your argument across, you're good to go. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you in the next video.